Hello everyone around the world. It's happy Monday time. We are looking at the top selling vehicle of all time. That's enough to make you want to jump up, jump up and get down. Jump, jump, jump. Everybody jump, jump. So this is the Corolla. It's a 2021 Corolla LE. I'm going to show you all about it. We're going to do a tutorial, a how to. We're going to learn buttons, controls, dials. We'll talk about the exterior. We'll talk about a really cool convenience package that's on it. This will help you to research just about any trim level of Corolla that you're looking for. We'll, of course, do this on the LE, but it's also gonna help you learn more about the car that you already own. Maybe there's a button, maybe there's a control, maybe there's a dial that you've never used. I'll bet you I can show you one that you've never known what it is. We're gonna do it today, so look for clues. We're also gonna have fun with this one, so you might hear some random spontaneous singing and dancing and move into the grooving. I don't know what I'm going to say. I didn't practice this. All right, let's go. Woo. Now, in the description section, I'm going to be showing you timestamps so that if there is a certain section or something you want to learn about and you don't want to watch the whole entire video, go to the timestamps and then go to 2 minutes and 32 seconds where I talk about interior controls or multi-information display. Maybe at 4 minutes and 72 seconds. Did I just say four minutes and 72 seconds? Let it roll! So at four minutes and 72 seconds, we're gonna be talking about miles per gallon. So go there if you wanna learn about that. If you wanna know what the window sticker contains, specs, pricing, it's gonna be crazy! Go to that section on window sticker. It'll be 17 minutes in, I don't know. Do that. And then there'll always be something fun at the end when I do my outro and I talk about my other social media platforms. Go there, there'll be something funny at the end of most of my videos just to keep you guys looking at the end of it and you can see future videos that might pop up. All right, Corolla time, boom! We're gonna start here and walk around and remember I told you that just about any trim level you can pick up something through this tutorial. So it doesn't matter if you own an SE or an SE Nightshade or an SE Manual or an XSE or the Corolla Apex or Corolla L, LE, XLE, Maybe it's the hybrid LE, huh? A lot of different trim levels. So there's something for everybody with the Corolla if this is the type of vehicle that's for you. I love how it drives. The seats are very comfortable and it's very user friendly. In other words, it's easy to learn. And I'm gonna help you with that. What do you think so far? Are we doing good? How are we doing? This one I wanna talk about right away because one of the main questions I get about Corolla is blind spot monitor. How do I get it? Well, on the LE, it does not come standard with this one. So you're gonna want something called the LE convenience package. That's the way to do it. This one has it. So it's gonna give you blind spot monitor right here in the side mirrors. That comes with rear cross traffic alert. And then you'll get 16 inch alloy wheel upgrade. Okay. You'll also get a smart key push button start and then you'll get heated outside mirrors that are power adjustable from the inside. It doesn't mean they auto fold. It means you can adjust them power so the mirror is exactly how you want it. That's near the driver's door. Convenience package. Let's look under the hood here so we can see the lever is right here, kind of right by the center of the Toyota symbol if you're looking for it and just click it left to open it up. It has a prop rod. It does not have soundproofing on the LE, just so you know. This is a 1.8 liter four cylinder engine. It works with a CVT, continuous variable transmission. It's very smooth between zero and the top cruising speed, I think. This is gonna give you 139 horsepower and 126 foot-pounds of torque. It's not a hot rod, it's not a speed demon, but I'll tell you what, it's a zippy, pretty peppy car. So if those words mean anything to you in layman's terms, use that on the Corolla driving. So when you're at zero and just kind of cruising along, it's very smooth, it's really comfortable. So this might be the one for you. Hey, ah, push it. The Ellie model is gonna have a double J pattern. It's got by LED headlights and then LED daytime running lights. It's in a double J pattern, you'll see those LED strips. Now, if you get bumped up to something like an SE or an XSE, you're gonna see three, ah, ah, three stripes, ah, ah. So 
that would be an indicator as you're walking by that you might be looking at an SE or an XSE three stripes. It just depends on whether you like this nice traditional family sedan here or if you want to get a little bit sportier. It's got a black wire mesh grille with honeycomb patterns on it. Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. So it's bumped up from the original Toyota Safety Sense. You might see things like road sign assist where it picks up stop signs, do not enter signs, yield signs. It even tells you the speed limit sign that you're going. Also, I really like lane tracing assist. I use this on my Venza all the time. It keeps you centered in your lane by watching using the camera up here. It's watching those stripes on either side of you. If they're well marked, it'll keep you centered in your lane, going around turns, following people closely in traffic. I don't know why you'd have your radar or cruise control on then if you're following somebody in tight traffic. I don't know if I'd suggest that, but it's really handy and it's useful. If you're ever distracted, it's gonna keep you in your lane. So, I mean, kids don't get distracted. Can we talk about this here? Let's just have a talk. Don't get distracted. If you do, use lane tracing assist. I'm a terrible person to talk to about safety measures. Just kidding, I'm the best. Don't be distracted. Final answer. As far as the back of the car, there's not all that much to see, but there is something of note to tell you. This has LED tail lights and stop lights. So they shine brighter, they come on quicker, which could be safety. They also look pretty darn sweet. The backup camera's right in here. You'll see that hidden from the weather like mud and snow and rain as much as possible and if it gets it on it you got to get it wet and dirty and cleaned all that kind of stuff i'm rambling now i'm a rambling gambling man this color here is called celestite it's one of the newer colors for toyota it's like a sort of a bluish gray it's beautiful it sparkles it shines I love it. And on a day like today, you're going to get the full appreciation. This has smart key push button start, which means it's got the smart key on it. Beautiful. All right. So what that means is if you walk up to the car and it's locked, you got your hands full of goods, automatically unlocks the front doors so you can get in. You can start the car with the key in your pocket or your purse or your bag or even in the back seat. As long as it's in the car, it'll start it and then you can stop it. And here's how you lock it. See that? So we can lock it. We can unlock it. Lock it again. So that way, if you got the key in your pants pocket or whatever, you can do all that without even getting the key out. Handy, and it's a good safety measure. Woo! Probably the first thing we want to do is set up our phones. So we're gonna need a couple different tools, couple different resources. Number one, you gotta have your phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android. And then we're gonna to go to this screen right here and we're just gonna turn this on. Ah! And then we're gonna hit phone. And it's gonna say there are no Bluetooth devices registered. Would you like to add one? Hit yes. And then it's going to lead you through a series of directions and it's very easy to set up your phone from there. So that's all you need to do to set up your phone. The other thing you might wanna know is where the USB port is. It's hidden right here. As a matter of fact, Toyota knows it's hidden, so they put a little sign, a little tag here that says this is where your USB. And so if you wanna do Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you're gonna to need to, let's see if I did this right. Got it. So now, it's connected and that's how you do it. So you can remove this. It's sort of like the mattress tag, only removed by the owners. And then here are the cords that you plug into your phone for Apple CarPlay. We'll show you more of that later. To me, I'd want to go to the home screen first of all. So push home and it gives you three different pieces of information about your car. Some miles per gallon, how far till you run out of gasoline. That'll match up with what you see here on your multi-information display. So you can see it in two different spots. Here's your radio and there's your phone information. What if I want to get new information? I'm going to go to menu, setup, and then we want to customize our home screen. And then we can choose different layouts. Do we want three or four and how do we want them? Maybe we even want two. I see you can do that also. And so we can change it right here. What are the four that we want? Do we want phone here? No, I want the clock. Do we want audio here? No, I want the phone. So now we've got audio, eco, phone, all that kind of stuff. So you can adjust it how you want it. 
And then when I go to my home screen, now I've got four pieces of information. Holla, hashtag, we did it. And then audio. Okay, we're gonna use that a lot, of course. So we want source. You can choose AM, FM, Sirius XM, or Bluetooth. USB, I don't use that one all that much, but Bluetooth is gonna be whatever is on your phone. So I choose Sirius XM right now. So we'll go to presets and you can see where you are. You can move it this way, just like this. I like 80s on eight, of course I like it. I suggest channel 12 too, Pop Rocks is really good. You can also move it by pushing this right here and that'll go through your different types that you have set up as far as presets. So if I wanna to go to number two, go over here, boom. Did it, did it, did it, get it. I know from my years in sales that a lot of times people will never change the bass and the treble in their car ever. So what I always did when I did sales was I would adjust it for them what I thought was really good sound for the car. I always like a three setting for treble, three for mid, and two for bass. You can change that however you want to, but that's what you do. You go to sound and then treble mid bass. If you want to adjust it forward and backward based on who's in the car and who wants to hear stuff, who doesn't, just do that. And then we can go back and then auto sound levelizer. That's going to raise the volume of the radio based on how fast you're going. So this is going to increase it a slight amount, but not tremendously. If you really want to boom, 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 bang the bass, turn up the treble, you can do that as you get up to highway speed. We'll keep it right here as Toyota thinks that's a good way to do it. Presets, so let's say we want 25 to be the new, we turn it, hold it down for a couple seconds. I love your videos. You guys, that was hilarious. The park ranger stopped me to tell me how much he enjoys my videos. That was really cool. So let's say we wanted to change it to 24 now. 22, we'll do Pearl Jam. Hold it down, and now that one is your new setting. So that's how you do that one there. Here's an interior tour. This is with the black seats. They're actually really nice. They're very soft, very comforting. They comfort me. They're very comfortable also, in addition to the emotional support they give me. No, but for front seat and back seat passengers, it makes for a nice ride, whether you're city commuting or whether you've got a longer road trip, I think. That's what I would say. I see a pocket here. It's handy for backseat passengers and kids especially. And look, you can adjust the leg room. There, there's not much because maybe you've got the tallest person back there. And here, that's set for me. You've got more. I've got the seat back just because I was filming, but you can easily put it forward more and there's plenty of leg room. It's a surprising amount of room. If you own one, you'll know what I mean. It's not bad. And then for child safety latches, you can just clip in right there and then they fit back in. I'm not sure if I can do that with one hand. Yes, I can. And see, they go all the way across, so you can even clip one uh, young baby right here in the middle seat by using the two next to it for clips. And the armrest, when it comes down, oh yeah, squeeze the Charmin, baby. Squeeze me, baby. You can squeeze me in the morning. You can squeeze me in the night. It even has top latches for child safety seats. For child, there you go. There's three of them. Here you go, here you go. And then let's look here. We do not have, we do not have rear air vents. We've got a little pocket for whatever you want to put there, maybe a phone. I can see that. And then here's what it looks like. It's pretty modern interior, really. It does have a raised screen, but a lot of Toyotas are going that way. So I know some of you might not like it, but that's the way things are gonna be going now. It limits distraction by having it up there. I know some people say, it looks like an iPad, it looks like a tablet. I totally understand what you're saying, but that is the way things are going and it's less distracting because you're not looking down to see that information. You're looking pretty close to across, maybe a little down, but not as much. You can see the push button start there. It also has the digital temperature controls, which is nice. Now we're gonna talk about the shifter. Why are we gonna talk about the shifter? That's park reverse neutral drive. Well, on this Corolla here, right down there, baby, it's got the letter B, okay? It's got the letter B, B for boy, I'm a boy. And if this boy is gonna show you about the shifter. What B is, that's engine braking. Why would you use engine braking if it's already in drive? Don't you just put your foot on the brake pedal? Well, if you're going in the mountains, let's say, we we'll use that as an example, maybe it's a little slippery, maybe it's a little steep, 
And if you're going down that hill and you're worried about the braking, you can put it into B while you're driving. You can shift it on the fly, and then that will reduce the engine power, increase the engine braking while you're going down. So you can go down at a more controlled rate if you're nervous about that. So that's just one thing to kind of store away in the Jeopardy trivia bank. Jeff, what are you talking about here? That didn't make sense. Okay, park, reverse, neutral drive. I'm gonna start the car. It's in park. It's in reverse. It's in neutral. It's in drive. While you're driving, you can put it in B, and then it's in B for engine braking, and it will reduce the engine power and increase the braking so that you can go down at a slower, more conservative, controlled rate. Look, it's also got brake hold and electronic parking brake. See, since it's in the drives, there's no need to have a parking brake on, but watch this. As soon as I put it in park, it's gonna go on. Reverse, it goes off. Now listen to the That's normal. Your car's not doing anything wrong. The brake hold button, what that does, it says hold on it. So if you have the driver's seat belt buckled and the driver's door shut, we're doing safety measures here, then it will allow you to turn the brake hold on. You have to do this. Here's our PSA here, public service announcement. You have to push it. You have to push that hold button every time you get into the car because the default is that will not be on. If you don't do it, please don't expect it to work. So you push the hold button. That means that the system is on and ready to go. And then when you pull up to a stop sign or a traffic light, okay, you can take your foot off the brake for up to three minutes at a time and the car will not go anywhere. You'll see the word hold and hold. It'll be in two different places. If it's on in two different places, the system's on and hold is working right now, then you can take your foot off the brake, but do not do it unless it says hold twice. So look at that screen before you do it. I just don't want you to think it's on and then you, boom, slide into somebody else because you thought it was gonna hold you in place and didn't. It does it for three minutes. If you're there at the light longer, it'll kick over to the emergency parking brake. Okay, so the electronic parking brake. Got it? Brake hold. Let's learn about this driver's seat here. Is it a power driver's seat? No, it is not. You will not see buttons here. You will not see lumbar support. There is a way to give you the adjustment vertically that you want. So we're gonna pull a bar here in front. You can go quite a bit. You can also move the back of the seat. So I'm gonna go a little bit more forward and you can, ha ha, you could do that. Now watch the vertical motion. This is like a pump. So you go ch -ch 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 -ch, like that. So let's go all the way down first. This is exciting TV, folks. Okay, so here I am. Here I am, the one that you love, trying to say stupid things. Do you see how far I'm being raised? There we go. Okay, so it went up quite a bit. So if you're taller or shorter, this could be very, very valuable to you. Very valuable. I feel like I got a shake weight. I'm gonna show you now the window and mirror adjustments. They're pretty easy. Couple tricks to it. This is pointed toward the driver mirror. Now it is pointed toward the passenger mirror. So if I've got it on this one here, I just make adjustments and you can hopefully see that I'm turning it turn down for what? And then if I want to flip it to that side there, I can make adjustments this way so that you can see my tripod. It's very important. Now the window adjustments, they're like this and each passenger has it. But if you have this blocked out, if you have it blocked out, passengers will not be able to open up their windows. I can do it, but they cannot do it. And it's all one touch windows. Just one touch and they go up and down. So if this is blocked out, the passengers will say, how come I cannot open up my window? It's because you have it blocked. There, now they can. This is the trunk release. That's the gasoline door release where we get our 33 MPG combined. Here we go, that's the hood release. 
This is the brightness of the dash. Pop it up all the way, it's gonna come on the brightest. Okay, that's your automatic high beams. They're on, they're off, they're on, they're off. They switch between high beams and low beams based on if it sees a car coming at you so you don't blind people. Okay, pull that down and then you can pull the steering wheel in and out or up and down and please lock it back up into place. If you don't do that, it's gonna wobble while you drive. You'll know it right away. And then here's your light adjustments. This is daytime running lights off. Daytime running lights allow your car to be seen about 11% more than cars without it. So you might want to have that on. That's not a good way to do it. Let's put it to auto. Now it's automatically gonna come on. Parking lights, lights on, bright lights. Got it? Now I'd like to go to the temperature controls. This is the knob that increases your fan speed. This is the temperature. If you wanna have it automatically do what it needs to do to get to 66, execute order 66. Then you do that, okay? That'd be auto. How do I turn it off? I don't know how to turn it off. I'll turn it off that way. Anyway, so let's say we go back on. Um, if you wanna pull in air from the outdoors, that's air conditioning on and off, do that. You smell it. If you want to recirculate the air and get the coldest air, do that. Eco, heat and cool, you'll see it comes on a little bit less. You're saving on energy. That's where the air comes out, so just follow the pictures. Remember, you have heated power outside mirrors. That heats them. That heats the back window, too. Front window heated. All right, let's go. Now, if you want to turn traction control on and off, you can do that. The only time you would use it in a Corolla is if you're stuck in a snowbank or mud or sand for whatever reason and you wanna to try to rock your car back and forth, back and forth like that, you could turn it off. Here's what happens when you push it. It says traction control turned off. The car's saying, are you sure you wanna turn traction control off? It's a really good safety feature that's designed to prevent wheels from spinning and slipping and give you more traction. If you want to turn it off, go ahead, but that's what you do. It's really for rocking. Now this one right here, engine start and stop. If you have your foot on the brake, you start it. But if you do not have your foot on the brake and you push it, that's the accessory buttons. So see, the controls will come on. You can play your radio. You can blow warm air, but the air won't be on and the car won't be started. Now we're gonna talk about the steering wheel controls. Let's start with cruise control, we'll go easy here. That turns cruise control on, and this sets your speed at whatever speed you're going. And then if you're set at 72 and you wanna pop it up, it goes to 73, 74, 75, 76, 75, 74, 73, 74, 75, 74, 73, just like that. And if you wanna turn it off, you can cancel it just like that. That's how that works. Now, see these markings right here? And we'll also turn it, well actually no, we'll just turn it up here. I'm gonna show you this one. Okay, push this. If you have three bars, that's a wide distance between you and the car in front of you. If you want a medium distance, you'll push that to go to a medium distance. And if you want the closest distance, it'll still be radar cruise control, but it'll have you closer to cars in front of you you can push that button. And then if I wanna go over to the driver support, which is what this is here, you can see this is how you make adjustments to the distance between you and cars in front of you. If I also turn on lane departure alert, then your LTA, lane tracing assist is turned on. You have to have the cruise working and you have to have lane departure alert pushed on. That's how you get that to work. So. Since we're here, let's talk about the multi-information display. You're gonna use this keypad right here to kind of just jostle over to the screen that you want. Let's go down. You can see my MPG is not gonna be very good right now. We're supposed to be getting 30 in the city, 38 on the highway combined of 33. You can't do that when you're just sitting here burning fuel talking about the car. Okay, 179 miles till I run out of gasoline. This is your eco uh, meter. Every time you go faster, it's gonna go this way, you'll get worse gas mileage. Every time you go this way, you want it down in this 
left setting and that'll give you better gas mileage. So try to stay as low to that as possible. Let's go over, that's our driver support. This is more information about the car. There's only one screen there. Settings, okay, we're gonna push some things. Lane tracing assist, hold it down. Do we want the lane centering on? Do we want the steering assist on or off? How sensitive do you want the system? Sway warning. Is it gonna tell you if you've been going outside of your lane too much? It'll tell you that. Pre-collision system, do you want it off or do you want it on? I say you should have it on. Okay, you can also, if you push it down and hold it, you can change the sensitivity of your pre-collision system. Blind spot monitor off, maybe I want it on. I'm gonna turn it off and then I'm gonna turn it on again right there where you're looking anyway to turn. So that's how you do that. Do you want your rear cross traffic alert on or off? That will notify you if there are people or cars coming from the side or behind you. Look at this wind. Woo! Road sign assist. Do you want it off? Do you want it on? Let's hold that down. Ho! Oh, notification method. Do you want to be notified above the speed limit, visually, or audio, or both? Let's go back. Others. Do you want to be notified with other pieces of information, visual, audio, both? Okay, notification level. This is when you go higher than what you have the speed limit being. So when you have road sign assist on, it can alert you the speed limit. It'll say, the last sign I read was 45 MPH. It will notify you visually or audio or both if you're going one mile an hour over, if you're going three mile an hour over, or five. So that would mean if it was 45 that the car thinks the speed limit, the legal speed limit is, you'll be notified when it goes 46 or 48 or 50. This is really good for teenage and young drivers who are trying to keep their speeds down. That's a really good thing. And I'm gonna show you how to set it right now. Notification level, we're gonna push that. Do you wanna be notified one mile an hour over, three or five? Okay, I hope I taught you something new because I did say I was gonna teach you something new. Vehicle settings, what's that? Let's hold it down, we gotta hold it down. Tire pressure warning system, set pressure, change the wheels, scheduled maintenance. Do you wanna reset the data or no? I don't wanna do that. Of course not. Settings, let's hold that down. Language, do you want English, Espanol or En Francais? Units, kilometers, miles per hour, miles per gallon. Do you want the eco meter off or on? Fuel economy. Do you want the trip average, the total average, or the tank average? Those are all things that you can look at, especially if you're conscientious about your fuel. Drive info type. Do you want trip or total? Drive info items. Do you want distance or total time? Do you want your multi-information display on or off? I want it on. Default settings. Are you sure you want to restore to factory settings? No, of course not. I do not want to do that, folks. All right. And then you'll get a message on this particular one if you need your tires filled. Maybe you ran over a nail. It'll tell you that the tire pressure is low in one tire. And if maintenance is due soon, it'll tell you that too. So those are all good things. Let's go over here. This goes between AM, FM, Bluetooth, satellite radio. This goes between your preset stations. This is voice commands. If you have your Apple CarPlay plugged in, you can hold that down and say, call wife, or I guess any type of thing. Change to Sirius XM, so-and-so, or play Huey Lewis in the news, if this is it. If this is it, please let me know. Yeah, volume, and then this is to pick up a call and to hang up a call. And this one right here goes back and takes away warning messages. I have a door open. Push that, it goes away. That's it. All right, so I'm gonna show you up here, then we're gonna talk about the window sticker, and then we're gonna send it on out here. So if the Corolla's rocking, don't come knocking, baby. Woo! 
All right, so let's go up above. Okay, notice here that we've got an oblique handle. We've got an oblique handle also with a hook. So maybe you can put a garment or something like that or a bag. Got lights up above. We've also got sliders to block out the sun. How about that? Block out the sun, do, 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 do. Block out the sun, I say. It's all right to block out the sun with the visor, do, 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 do. Okay, we got that. If you want the lights to always be on, you can have it always be on. I like to have the lights come on when the doors are open. And then safety connect, this is SOS. You can't push it right now because the little visors down, the glass, plexiglass, but then you can push it like that. It'll say, welcome to safety connect. Do you have an emergency? So I'm not gonna push it, but that's what that does. It does not have an auto dimming rear view mirror. Now, something I may want to tell you is, remember, you can accessorize your car. You can do it at the regional assembly point before the car gets here if you're ordering it or your dealership level. If you have a dealership that has a lot of accessories, you can add mud guards, body side moldings. You can change out the auto dimming rear view mirror to add home link. There's so many different things you can add to a vehicle like a Corolla, a Camry, a RAV4, a 4Runner, a Tundra. So many choices. So ask your dealership what they have because it might protect the car. It might add to the looks, the performance, the safety, the convenience. Those are things that you'll wanna know. So ask your dealer, they can do it after the fact or they can build it into your deal and it would just raise the payments or raise the total price, but it might be something that you really wanna have on there. I suggest mud guards for everybody. What do you guys like? What's your sign, baby? The fuel mileage on a 2021 Corolla LE is combined of 33 MPG, 30 in the city, 38 on the highway, combined of 33 right here. Driver's side has the fuel. We got it, we got it. All right, excellent. And then we could take this baby through the car wash. Working at the car wash, yeah. Here's the window sticker. As promised, we've got Corolla LE made in Blue Springs, Mississippi. Isn't that cool? Celestite, that's how you pronounce it. Celestite gray. It's named after a mineral. Cool looking mineral too. Really good safety ratings on Corolla. So that gives you peace of mind that this would be a great vehicle for your family member, your mom, your grandma, your aunt, your uncle, your kid. I have my daughter in a 2020 Corolla LE and I feel very comfortable with the safety ratings on this one here. Plus I love the Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. Here's the fuel mileage that I mentioned. I'm gonna look at standard equipment here. Remember it has 139 horsepower and notice that the wheels without that convenience package has the 16 inch wide steel wheels. Okay, so that's not alloy wheels. You want to upgrade if you want to upgrade. Do it. Airbags, 10 airbags in this one. That's a lot, you guys. And then we'll look. It's an 8-inch touchscreen with traditional audio. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is new for 2021. That's cool. All right, here's the factory MSRP. If you found a way to buy it in Blue Springs, Mississippi, it's right there. The convenience package. This is a really good value. For $11.50, you get a lot on this one. So I'd recommend you look at this one if you have it in your budget. Delivery charge, that gets it from the factory to any dealership in the U.S., $22,605. And then we're going to finish it out with an LED light package, interior light package. You saw those in there. Normally, it would be the yellow lights and carpet floor mats. Remember, Toyotas come in without floor mats generally. So make sure that it has it because you don't want a rainy day to spoil the fact that you don't have mats. All right, this is about 23,000 equipped with that convenience package. Thank you for going on a full speed tutorial on the Corolla LE. I hope this helps you learn more about your car and I hope it helps you research the vehicle that you might be looking. Remember, you can use this with an SE, XLE, LE hybrid. A lot of the buttons and controls and dials are gonna be the same. The higher the level, the more features on it, but this one's very well equipped actually, especially with that convenience package. So please follow me on Instagram at Toyota Jeff one. You'll find me on Facebook. Yeah, I'm there at Toyota Jeff. And then I'm on TikTok doing crazy zany things at Toyota Jeff two. Some of them are taken Toyota Jeff two on TikTok. And then follow my stories, torquenews.com slash Toyota. Please do that.
I got some breaking news on Toyota Tundra, the next gen. Go there, torquenews.com slash Toyota. You'll see it all. And then my website, of course, is toyotajeff.com. Thanks, everybody, so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Woo! Quiet. I hunting koala. Uh, uh, uh. Maybe you should click those videos up there, huh? <laughs>